Welcome everybody. Welcome to another Sunday evening live session. I like to do these every Sunday, spend my Sunday evenings with you, mentally preparing myself for the week, answering questions. I love answering all your questions. It really keeps me on my toes. So I love it. Keep the questions coming for anybody just joining. We're going to switch it up today. If you're just joining and you sell on Amazon, put your monthly sales totals in the comments. We're going to be totaling them up over here. I want to get a total of everybody's monthly sales. So just throw them in the comments. I'll total them up. What's up, my friend? Amazon with Brian. Thank you for joining. Bradley's gone. Yeah, he's about to create another account. Wow. So yeah, this is your time. I'm here to spend it with you, provide you value. If you got any questions at all, throw them in the comments. All right, we got 40,000, we got 40K, we got 15K, we got 20K in pounds. So that's like what? We'll say 25K. Um, am I missing anybody here? So if you're just joining us, we're totaling up everybody's sales, monthly sales averages if you sell on Amazon. So if you sell on Amazon, Put your monthly sales average in the comments and we are totaling them up. I want to see how much money you guys are making and girls are making. We got 3K. All right, fantastic. And this is your sales, not my sales. So I'm here to provide value. If you got any questions, we got 16K. Amazing. I love that. 7K, fantastic. We are getting up there. What else we got? Hope all is well. What is the best way to form relationships with suppliers post COVID? So offer them value. Right now, a lot of suppliers, we got another 10K. Right now, a lot of suppliers, another 10K. A lot of suppliers right now are open to opening Amazon accounts. Sellers who sell on Amazon, they're open to selling products to them because sales are hurting in the brick and mortar sector. So there's a huge opportunity to use that to your benefit and reach out to these companies because the companies that maybe said no two months, three months, four months, six months ago are now willing to say yes because they need that additional revenue coming in from somewhere. So they're a little more open to opening Amazon accounts, which is huge. And what we do is we just call and we use the same scripts we ever use. Hey, I'm Eric, I'm uh, internet. Uh, I'm an e-commerce wholesaler. I'm interested in opening up a wholesale account. Can you please send me over your Excel catalog along with any account applications? If you have any free, have any questions, feel free to reach out. It's that simple. People overcomplicate the account opening process. Overcomplicate it like so much. So if you're just joining, we're tallying up everybody's sales totals for this call, your sales totals right now, 40 plus 15 plus 25 plus three plus 16 plus seven plus 20. Right now we're at 126K. So that's your sales totals. That's how much you guys and girls are selling on Amazon monthly on average, 126K, that's pretty impressive. Uh, brand approvals, ungated categories are killing me. Don't know what to do. I'm, I'm assuming you're a fairly new seller. O's Girl, I'm assuming you're a fairly new seller and it's part of the grind in the beginning. Just don't give up. Don't quit before that miracle happens. The more you sell on Amazon, the more you sell those products you are approved for, the easier it will be to get approval. And also, always whenever you have um, a, a approval, follow the prompts. Click request approval. See what it says. A lot of time it's just invoicing. They just need invoicing from a reputable distributor. And if you submit that to them, you're very likely to get approved in those categories. Now it also has to do with your account metrics and your history on Amazon. So those are big as well. But the longer you're selling on Amazon, the more power you'll have on Amazon. That's why we're firm believers in having one Amazon account. I don't want to split my customer reviews between two accounts. I don't want to split the history of us selling on Amazon between two accounts and because of that we've been able to grow a company with over a hundred and thirty thousand trusted customer reviews Amazon buyers people who shop on Amazon trust our company because of that and they'll trust your company if you keep selling on Amazon so um, that's what you do you just keep selling man keep selling those products you can sell a lot of suppliers open to partnerships as well how what do you mean partnerships how would a partnership work like they take a percentage of the profits I'm not uh, from my experience I'm not really interested in a in a partnership if, if that's what you're referencing no problem Mike so if you're just joining put your sales totals 
your monthly sales averages, your monthly sales on Amazon averages in the comments. We're tallying them up right now from your sales. We're at $126,000 a month. That's pretty impressive. Um, is Amazon not giving new sellers a charge, a change anymore? What does that mean? A change. You got to elaborate on your questions here. I'm happy to answer any questions, but a change on what? If you can elaborate, Mr. Mark Wilder, on what you're referring to a change to, I have no problem answering your questions. Um, what profit margin are your goals, if you don't mind me to ask? Yeah, so we shoot, our minimum buying requirements is 10% gross profit margin. That's the minimum we'll bring a product on. Now, obviously, we want to purchase products that are making more money than that, right? Because 10% gross profit on a $20 product is $2 in gross profits. And then you got to deduct expenses from that. So that $2 might become 75 cents, 50 cents after all that's deducted. So, but that 10% is a minimum. Um, and then we obviously shoot higher for that. Right now, we operate a company right around low 20% gross profit margins. Very healthy. You know, even after you deduct expenses from that, we're still making a lot of money. And our company's healthier than it's ever been. So you should set some buying prerequisites. Now, our buying prerequisites, as yours should be, are based on our company. You have to understand your expenses before you could set buying requirements in place. If you're much smaller, your expenses are probably lower, so you can sacrifice and take lower percentages. I know a lot of people have very high profit margin requirements um, and even return on investment requirements, which return on investment is a whole nother conversation. It's a very sticky conversation because a 15% return on investment on a $100 product is reasonable. That's $15. But a 15 percent return on investment on a two dollar product is 30 cents not very exciting 30 cents so roi is is definitely a tricky zone when you start getting into that now obviously if you're selling higher listed price products you know 40 50 dollars plus then roi could make sense but when you get into the average of most wholesale products which is right around 20 dollars average selling price roi is tricky to go by so we don't really look at roi amazon with brian said eric i'm in your course started in July wholesale do you think it's a good idea to still sell used books on the side to grow my wholesale business since it takes time yeah absolutely absolutely if that's what you know as long as your account is maintaining a healthy business profile your account health is is up there and you don't have any dings on your account and you're not jeopardizing your account by selling those used books like listing um, used and under new condition or getting a lot of customer returns or customer complaints that the book is damaged so on and so forth as long as everything's operational then absolutely we didn't fully transfer from retail arbitrage to wholesale for about two full years it took us two years where we were still dabbling in retail arbitrage you know the first three months we were probably 90% retail arbitrage, 10% wholesale. Then the next six months, it was probably 80-20. And then, you know, the first year is 50-50. And then as the, as the months went on, we were able to adjust those percentages until it became 100% wholesale business. So absolutely. if Listen, if you know how to sell books and books is your bread and butter, keep selling books. It's going to keep generating revenue so you can invest it into wholesale right now you are at 126,000 that's huge huge partnerships good for first time sellers that are not liquid so what do you mean can you explain what you mean by a partnership like they're what uh, please explain that I'd love to talk to you about that um, with private label brands so this is JG's on said with private label brands lots of my clients have been comfortable allowing us to list their products on Amazon and split profits oh so that's what you mean by partnership so they're saying hey we'll allow you to sell our products on Amazon but we want 50% of your profits I I'm not interested in that, really. If it's working for you, it's working for you. But 
there's a lot of work that goes into now if they're sending them directly to amazon under your account and you don't have to handle them then that makes sense but if you have to process the inventory label the inventory ship it to amazon all that good stuff then i don't know 50 percent margins what are they doing for that 50 percent margin what are they doing where's their value in that relationship Besides just giving you some products to sell. There's a lot of great products to sell. Don't get caught in these shit relationships. I'm not saying this specific relationship is shit. I don't know enough about it. But early on, we made a lot of poor relationship decisions that we learned. They weren't poor in retrospect. In retrospect, they taught us so much about the industry. They allowed us to expand our mindset and expand our growth opportunities. But in the beginning, we didn't know. So we were just like, yeah, we'll, we'll pay for all your advertising. And then, you know, six months later, we invest $5,000 on this brand and we learn a lot about advertising, but we're out five grand and we only made five grand off the profit. So we broke even, did a lot of work for six months. So it's like things like that. But if you're early on, this is a great learning experience for you. And I don't know how the relationship's operate. Do you see, um, so, sorry, these are all sideways. Hand Santix said, do you see any problems with having a foreign VA apply for an account? Um, like its own account, their own account for you to sell under? It Listen, as long as they're in one of the approved countries and have all the information necessary to set up an Amazon account, then yeah, they could technically, yes, they could set up an Amazon account. But then you're not going to own that Amazon account. You know, you're not going to be the, his information or her information is going to be on everything. So unless they're some sort of member in your company, that could be an issue. I'm reaching out, so this is on O's Gerlot said, I'm reaching out to the wholesale distributors, but they are not willing to open an account with me because I don't have a warehouse and background references. So background references, warehouse could be an issue. You definitely, you could tell them, you know, you do have a warehouse and ship it to a prep center. That's an option. Um, early on, that is a struggle. Um, especially if you don't have a warehouse, it's definitely challenging to open accounts, but it's possible. We have a lot of people in our course right now who do not have a warehouse and they're opening accounts left and right uh, because it's a volume game. And then as far as trade references go, you can use accounts that you've opened with like, let's say Uline, you could use your Uline account, you can use your bank as a, as a trade reference. So there's other ways to use trade references. They don't have to be industry trade references. Now, most distributors would prefer industry trade references because they're aware of who those companies are, but the companies do not, it's not a requirement that they have to be unless the company is saying it is, but you can use smaller accounts that you have credit lines with, um, such as Uline or your bank account. You can use those as trade references as well. Carlos, what's up, bro? I'm happy you're still alive. I haven't seen you in one call yet, my friend. I got to call you out. What's with that? I, I bet you're waiting for it to slim down a little bit, and then you're going to join when it's a little more personal for the remainder of the year. That's what I, I think you're going to do, but maybe I'm wrong. Oh, a chance with the buy box. Yeah, listen, it's not guaranteed, but the only way to ever win the buy box is to start selling on Amazon. So don't live in that fear like I'm a new seller, I'm not going to win the buy box because if with that fear, you're never going to fucking win the buy box. You're just never going to get the buy box because you're never going to get started because you have fear of not winning the buy box. So whether it's today or six months from now, you're not going to have the buy box because that fear is in your head that you're not going to have the buy box. So forget the fear, leave it aside. You know, what's the acronym for fear? Fuck everything and run or something? Forget everything and run? It's like, yeah, you can't live like that, man. You can't live in that fear. If you live in the fear of you, that you're not going to receive the buy box, then you're never going to receive the buy box. It's all about positivity. You wrote on top of that. What does that mean? Mr. Mark Wilder. Um, the game said, what's a good Q4 toy strategy? It is my first Q4. Is it better to stock up on high rank... High ROI, expecting ranks to get better or low rank, but low ROI, expecting margins to increase. I think you do both. Why do you want to limit yourself to just low, low rank, low ROI? Because if those listings tank, now you're left with no ROI. Not low ROI, but no ROI. And nobody wants to be left with no ROI. That's not fun, right? Because it, 
when the holidays approach and they come closer, Amazon becomes a very competitive, volatile market. It's important to understand that. You know, some products that look really good when Q4 hits and it's, you know, the end of November and the holidays are approaching, all of a sudden the rank fucking drags, drops drastically and also the margins do. And you go from making $5 to losing two. And now you're faced with the decision to drop price or let it ride. But then if you let it ride, it might not sell after the holidays. But there's also 40 sellers on the listing. So you're in this predicament. So I suggest doing an assortment of both. Getting those slower movers, higher ROI, because it leaves you a nice healthy margin percentage in between break even and profit where you have some room to drop price to make additional money. So I would do an assortment of both. If you're just joining us and you sell on Amazon, Put your monthly sales averages in the comments below. There's no monthly sales average that's too small, no monthly sales average that's too big. I've seen it all, we've done it all. So don't be shy, put your monthly sales average in the comments, we're totaling up all your sales. Right now we're at 126,000. Is Buy Box still acting up? The Buy Box was never acting up. It's Amazon dominates what happens with the Buy Box. It's, it's, an, it's, a, it's a decision that they made to allocate inventory based on certain fulfillment centers availability and their ability to ship on time. So there was no buy box glitch. A lot of sellers were saying there was a buy box glitch. I've been saying there's been no buy box glitch for three months now. Um, ROI is good if it's ROI net. ROI gross is just useless. I just, I prefer not to use ROI at all. You know, unless it's, Unless it's like, a, the only time I really consider ROI is if it's a really low priced item. Like if it's like, a, a, we're buying it for a dollar and we're making a dollar on it, sign me up for that shit. I have an issue with my returns. What would you, what would be your best way to deal with returns? So you're saying you're getting a lot of returns back to your house or your fulfillment center or your warehouse. And you want to know if you could just answer that question, L. El Chewy, if you can answer that question, I'll have no problem answering that. We get a lot of returns as well. Sebastian and I, the other day, were just talking about possibly bringing out one or two people just to manage our returns because they're getting, they're getting pretty fucking insane right now. What's up, everybody? Please recommend a supplier for a beginner. Oh, man, I would love to, but Avid Wholesale Group. Go to avidwholesalegroup.com. A-V-I-D wholesalegroup.com check out them they're a great supplier um and they don't care that you sell on amazon they don't care at all they'll have no problem creating an account they'll actually before they even ask you for to fill out an account application they'll send you a catalog so scrape it go through it avidwholesalegroup.com what's up everybody what's up what's up so if you're just joining we're totaling your sales your sales totals, monthly sales totals, put them in the comments below. What's up, Three King Closet? Thanks, Eric, for answering my questions. Very helpful. Anytime, Amazon with Brian. That's what I'm here for. Any comments on EE distribution? Yeah, they're great for getting ungated in products, but it's a fucking mess to put in an order from EE distribution. I personally placed orders with EE distribution. The last one I did was about maybe nine or 12 months ago. It was like a $30,000 order. I submitted to them. They came back after everything was calculated, all their out of stocks, it came to like a $1,300 order. I was so disappointed. I spent like six hours putting together this order and then I tried it again, came out with an even larger order because they had the original 30,000 plus another 10,000 that I added to it. And after out of stocks, it was like 1500 bucks. And I was like, I can't, I can't deal with these. I can't deal with that. That's like, no way am I wasting my time putting together a $40,000 order. And then you come back and you tell me that $1,500 of it is in stock. It's like, why don't you send me an updated product catalog? But what e distribution is good for is ungating and approvals. Um, the best way to get reviews from doing FBA is to use a review software like Feedback 5, Jungle Scout has one, so there's a bunch of different review softwares you can use. Um, we recommend using one of those. It beats having to go in and do the button click every time you're manually. What's up, my friend? Christian Domingo, what's up, brother? This guy uses e-distribution. 
Hello, evening, what's up? How good is E distribution? Like I said, they're all right. They don't get me excited, but for a new, for a beginner, they're, they're a good company because, you know, they ship directly to Amazon. I know that. They provide great invoicing for approvals. Um, you know, if you're placing a smaller order, then it's fine. But for our company, they don't work. You know, because we prefer to place, you know, 15, 20, 30, 40 thousand dollar orders and to get back all that out of stocks is not exciting. Moving into my warehouse tomorrow, FBA Phil. Congratulations, man. That is so exciting. I am so pumped up for you. I hope we get to see some pictures of it. That's power moves right there, FBA Phil. How do I know I'm getting a good price for my supplier? The market will determine that cross-reference them with Amazon and the keep it charts and you'll know if you're getting a good price. If you're getting murdered on Amazon, then most likely either Amazon's on the listing or you're not getting a good price and people are getting it cheaper. The market will determine if your supplier has a competitive price, right? Because you see it on listings all the time. There's 10 sellers, three of them, let's just say hypothetical, three of them are at $20, the other four are at $24.99. So out of those seven sellers, looks like those three had a more competitive price or those other four just don't know what they're doing, which is common as well. There it is. False evidence appearing, appearing real. I don't know where I heard fuck everything and run. How do I know I'm getting a good price? Yeah, the market will determine that. Oh, boom, 75K, got another banger in here. So now we're at 201K. $201,000 from y'all. If you're just joining, we want to know. And now we got another 7,500. Now we're at 208. We'll just round it up to 209 for easy calculations here. We'll round it up to 209. What's a good software you recommend to track profits? Hmm. Uh, inventory Lab? I've never personally used it, but I've heard great things from, you know, people in our course and people who have used it that you, you know, you put your uh, cost of goods in there and it tracks, tracks profits pretty well. So, um, but you would have to ask somebody who's used inventory lab. We actually had to build our own software to track profits. So, um, just because everything out there was, uh, just insufficient in our eyes, low RI better than no RI. Yeah facts what's a good saw uh 7500 from the casual flipper listen casual flipper send me over that i think you sent me a link did you dm me a link to your calendar to schedule that podcast i i apologize man shit gets a little crazy sometimes my instagram messages get super filled up and i forget who i responded to i flag them and then it just gets crazy in there, man. So if uh, if to, this is to anybody, if I don't answer your question in, you know, four or five days, just send me another DM. It means it got lost in my DMs. Okay, we got another 7K. So that brings us to, uh, what is that, 206 or no, 216. We're at 216K. That's huge. Derek James. $100 million. No, J Derek, we're doing the past 30 days. So the past 30 days, what are you at? Probably 11, 11 or 12 million. So Derek James just took us over the, over the, so now we're at 12 million, 216,000. And that's your sales. That's not my sales. That's your sales. That's huge. If products are still inbound, but classified as active, can I be the buy box rotation? Yes. Yes. The only time you sometimes will receive buy box rotation is if they are, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? Back ordered. If it says back ordered underneath the, right there at the offer, if it says back ordered, then sometimes you won't receive the offer unless you're the only person on the listing, then you will receive it. Or if there's other people who are back ordered, then you will receive or have a chance of receiving the buy box as well. But if you're back ordered um, and there's other people who are in stock at a competitive price, then most likely you're not going to receive the buy box. But absolutely, 
um, if your products are still inbound but classified as active then and there's available units in stock at Amazon then absolutely you can receive the buy box yes they are coming back to my warehouse okay so you're asking what do you do with them so the first thing we do is we stage them in our warehouse so everything first I make removal orders I'm going to take you from the rippity rip of what happens here when when returns are processed so I place a uh, removal order for all of our returns damaged defective goods in Amazon and I copy all of the listings all of the ASINs merchant SKUs FN SKUs plus the quantity that's coming back I copy them and I email them to our team downstairs along with the removal order ID so they can reference that if they have any questions but the reason why I copy them into an email is because when that return comes back to our warehouse they can literally just scan the FN SKU into their email and it will populate the reason for the return and there's a few different reasons why we return products a it was damaged effective like what you're talking about Amazon returns where it's damaged effective you have to pull it back to your warehouse or expired B um, you need approval to sell on that listing and you can't get approval and then see there's some sort of issue with the listing which sometimes the listing needs to be recreated with the same merchant SKU or a new merchant SKU but it needs to be created because it's incomplete listing so I send out an email with those three different categories so when the team scans that FN SKU they know okay this one Amazon considered expired defective let me go through it and see if it's expired or defective now if it is expired and defective that's when we make a decision to either list it on eBay with the expiration in the title or if it's defective we'll still make a decision to list it on eBay if it's not terribly defective and then if it's really defective or really close to expiration if it's really close to expiration we'll offer it to our employees if there's like three weeks on it we'll say hey does anybody want this completely free just take it or we'll donate it if we can get a donation company to come pick it up in the next week because they will take very close to expiration products or We'll simply just throw it out if it's close to expiration but defective units same thing we usually donate defective units especially if it's like a shampoo where the tops cracked or something like there's homeless people right now that donation companies can can give that to you know and people who can use that so i'm not going to throw that out i'm going to add it to our donation palette and donate it but we sort those returns and then most of the stuff usually gets sent right back to amazon because i don't know what it is with amazon but Sometimes they classify products as defective and I've even created cases for them to investigate them and they just respond with that it's defective and the only way to get it not defective is to pull it back to your warehouse and send it back to Amazon. Hope that answers your question. That is the long El Chewy. That is the long winded response to it. I've heard about those avid wholesale boys. Yeah, I've heard about them too. Seem like nice guys. Hi, e, Mona. What's up, my friend? Uh, my FBA, so Mark Jr. said, my FBA warehouse is struggling to generate sales. What are some recommendations you'd suggest? Um, advertising. Reasonable bid, mid-level mid bid, let's say $20 a day, $20 to $40 a day, or a budget, I apologize. Uh, mid-level budget, $20 to $40 a day. And all those SKUs that are moving, throw a bid at them, 15 cents. Let's see what happens. Um, it will usually generate some sales. There's slow movers, high profit slow movers. That's what we put in those campaigns. It's a game changer. Also, get more items in stock. Don't be discouraged. Get some more. Maybe you're, maybe, usually what happens when your products are moving, it started way before they even got in stock, way before they even hit the Amazon warehouses, way before they are even listed in your inventory. What usually happens if your Amazon inventory is not moving is you don't have an Amazon problem, you have a buying problem. So you need to retrace your steps and analyze. Go back, look at these keeper charts. Analyze them with your team. If it's just you, analyze them by yourself. Say, 
Say, was this a good buying decision? Let me look back to the day that I purchased this product. Let's say you purchased it on August 4th. Let me look at that. Keep a chart. What was I looking at at August 4th? Why did this seem like a good purchase? Analyze that shit and fucking learn from it. Because it's going to make you a much better buyer. I can promise you that. I literally do this with our team of buyers. I review two orders a week of theirs. And I sit and I review it and I make these calculated decisions of whether it was a good buy or not, right? And then if it was a poor buy and nothing checks out on the keeper chart, it's just a terrible buy, that's when I call them in the office and I have a talk with them. But most of the time when they purchased the inventory, it was a good buy. And then as time went on, it became a bad buy because Amazon has a volatile um, marketplace. It's kind of like the stock market it goes up and down. It fluctuates. There's a lot of different companies in there, different sellers. It's very much like the stock market. And the stock market's a risk, and Amazon is a risk, but it's a calculated risk. And if you make your calculations properly, properly, it could be a very profitable risk-taking business. And you can mitigate your risk. Also, something to do if your inventory is not moving, drop the price. Get rid of it. Why are you holding on to stale inventory? Get rid of that inventory. Stale inventory is not doing you any service. Drop the price, get rid of it. I don't care if you pay $10 for it and you gotta lose four bucks to get some money back. Use that $6 that you get back from it to buy more inventory. It's all about cash flow. Generate more cash flow, turn more inventory, make more sales. Oh, he's been on stealth mode. Just haven't been on the camera. Okay, I like that. Stealth mode Carlos over there on his 007 shit. Listening and observing. That's what I like to see. Still working every day. Ready for the more in-depth training. Awesome, my friend. How do you feel about the content and the videos? How do you feel about it? What was your favorite part? I know you're using some of that shit, man. How about the, the feed discounts? Did you enjoy that? Did you get to that yet? That one's a fucking game changer. Beast mode all the time. Respect the hustle. No time. No problem, Jeremy. Appreciate the help, bud. Keep it up. No problem. Uh, do you know if Schaefer can ungate? Uh, I know we used to place orders with Schaefer back in the day. I don't know if we ever used them for ungating or approval. You could ask them, too. You know, it's a very common question in, in today's market with wholesalers and distributors because there's a lot of Amazon sellers. There's a lot of Amazon sellers. So it's a common question. Hey, account rep, do your invoices work for ungating? You're not going to be the first person to ask that, so communicate with them. Any experience with Everest Toys? Yeah, we placed an order. I think I they, they sell like that weird like moss, like army uh, replica moss and stuff, right? For like little figurines. Um, yes, I did place an order with Everest. I met him at the New York Toy Show. This was probably two years ago because it didn't happen this summer. It wasn't the previous summer. It was about two years ago. It was the same thing with E distribution. It was it wasn't as large of an order, but it was like a 10k order. Ended up getting it back after out of stocks. So it was maybe like two grand. And after we you know analyzed the profits and and the products ran their course. We made a decision not to purchase from them anymore. I believe the the margins after we sold all the two, I think it was two orders. It was like a two thousand, then probably another two thousand dollar order. And after the average profit margin was like a dollar, I don't remember, low dollars though, and it was like an eight percent profit margin. So we we made a an executive decision to pass on them. But that was two years ago. There might be some great opportunities now. If you're just joining us, we're totaling up your sales, everybody who's in this live sales, monthly sales totals average for your company. And right now we're at, these are your sales, get a load of this number, $12,216,000 a month that you are selling on Amazon. Not me, that's what everybody in this live call is selling. That is fucking impressive if you ask me. Like that is intense. 12 million. All right, what's your opinion on, on gating on toys by sending the invoices for the first time from e distribution? Does it take multiple times? Um, no, we've had some success with e distribution. I know a lot of people use e distribution for ungating, so I don't think there should be any issue. And even if it does take multiple times, it will happen. Well, usually maybe two, three times. Um, 
from our experience from other companies but their invoices are phenomenal so mr mark wilder said i stopped getting the buy box is not rotating anymore since i don't have reviews is going to people with hundreds and thousands of reviews even i do fba and i'm the lowest price on all of them yeah look into advertising run some coupons offer a 50 cent off coupon offer subscribe and save that's another game changer if you have a subscribe and save maybe somebody wants that product every month so there's some there's some ways around this my friend there's definitely some ways around this and we go deep into the ways around this and any sellers are right mona's got a question hey e quick question what do you suggest to do if another seller on a listing lowers the price? Should I match it or wait for the buy box to go back up again? Depends on how much inventory they have. If the listing's moving 100 units a month and they have 600 units in stock, they have six months of inventory technically. I would match their price and compete for the buy box. Because I'm not waiting six months to sell my inventory. That's way too much cash flow sitting around, even if it's only 2,000 bucks. That's 2,000 bucks that, do you know how many times you could flip $2,000 in six months? You could probably get eight inventory turns on $2,000. You know, at a, at a let's just say 15% in, um, return, that's, you know, month by month by inventory turn two, you're at $2,300, right, at a 15% turn. And then inventory turn two or three, you're at like $2,700, so you could flip that inventory. So analyze the listing, look at the Keepa chart. Is it historical? Has it dropped like that consistently? Is this an outlier? Check on your competitive sellers. What kind of inventory do they have? Analyze the listing and make an educated decision based on the information. Don't just wing it and drop the price because all of a sudden someone else dropped the price. That's how people lose money. Bigger than my living room warehouse and smaller than yours. <laughs> That's good, man. That's exciting. That's a great answer, too. I respect that. When you buy things from AliExpress or something, are you bidding against other people? No, you're making a deal with the manufacturer. So the manufacturer is going to offer you initially a very high price or a reasonably high price, and then you negotiate with them and you try to get them lower on that price. And based on your analyzation of the current marketplace of what other similar products are selling at, you make an educated decision based on your research if that price they're giving you is suitable for you once you include shipping and all of that good stuff to get it to Amazon. So you are not negotiating against other people but you're negotiating with distributors and don't just because one distributor or manufacturer I apologize, one manufacturer manufactures a product doesn't mean there's not 40 other manufacturers who will manufacture that product. And I don't understand why everybody wants to go to China to get their, their products made. You can get the same fucking product made right here in the United States for 40 more cents a unit. And you don't have to pay the crazy shipping. Maybe even a dollar a unit, but you get to slap a made in the USA label on it. Especially right now, shit is crazy since this COVID thing. Um... But you get to slap a Made in the USA sticker on it. You get to pay practically nothing for shipping. And it's manufactured in the US. You get to support the economy. 86K in monthly sales. That is phenomenal. You just took us over the $12.3 million mark. Now we're at uh, 86 plus 16 is 96. That's 102. So now we're at. Uh, $12,302,000. That's how much everybody here sold on Amazon. Now we got a 16K. So now we're at 12,318,000. Million. Let's get to that $14 million mark. What time is it? I know these calls, they're like timed where I only get an hour and I'm, I'm not going to go over on this one. Um, Techometrics, good software for profit tracking, but it's expensive. That I agree with. What's up, Eric? 25K, 7.5K. So what do we got? 3.318 plus 0.25 plus 0.07. We'll add that up at the end. Hi, bro. Could you repeat the site name 
for wholesale for beginners. Thanks for the content. You inspire us. Avid wholesale group dot com. It's a very basic website, but there's contact information. Just email that contact information. They'll send you over a catalog. Avid A V I D wholesale group dot com. Do you sell products that Amazon lists also? Yes, we do. We make a lot of money on products that Amazon sells on. A, because there's a lot of fear. Amazon's on it. I'm not going to mess with it. But do your research. A lot of times Amazon's listed much lower than the buy box, or much higher rather than the buy box price. Also, a lot of times Amazon gives up the buy box. Also, a lot of times Amazon's not in stock. So analyze. Now, if you're looking at a keeper chart and the past year it's all orange and Amazon's dominating the buy box, stay away. But if there's some room to make some money, then go for it. E, Austin, what's up, my friend? I have 200 of a small product and what to ship it on a pallet. How can I send it without putting the FBA shipment contents as one, one son, each one in each box? Why would you put one in each box? If, if it's small, you can, let's say 200 units, you can ship it in two boxes and put 200 in a box. You just change the box content to, it would be 200 times, or 100 times two. So 100 units times two boxes is 200 units. Does that answer your question? You know when you create pallets, you have to put box content on each box like let's say this box contains 20 oh yes yeah so you have to do that any good trade shows to find good suppliers yeah actually in our private facebook group i just posted something that asd updated but you could simply go to asdonline.com they now have a digital marketplace to connect you with wholesalers and distributors across the country. Um, unfortunately, right now, due to COVID, a lot of trade shows are closed down. I'm super excited for them to open back up. But right now, it's slim pickings on trade shows. Hello. What software device do you use if a product is a good choice to purchase for FBA? To devise, to divide, if to decide. Um, we use a UPC scraper. We actually have a discount code in our AmazonLit.com website. It's 50% off, scan unlimited. Um, but we don't use that to decide if we purchase a product. We use ourselves. We use humans to decide, um, to read the keep the charts and make decisions. Uh, your beautiful cream said, ever since I took my time reading that Reading that year-long keep a chart, mm, my buys have gotten way better. I keep my own chart showing lowest price so I know how low I can price the product while still making profit. That's what I'm talking about, Brian. I love it. Everest was good to get me ungated toys for $50, but everything is out of stock. Yeah. Terrible out of stocks with, with Everest and EE. Um, so what is that? Now we got 95K. So that's plus, um, what is that? 095. Let me do a little quick math here. Canadian, which is nice to know. What's that? So we got 3.318 plus 0 0.025. Plus 0 0.007 plus 0 0.095. We're at three point or thirteen point four four. We're at thirteen million four hundred and forty five thousand dollars of your sales. It's not our sales. That's your sales people in this live Canadian, which is a nice Canadian, which is nice to know. Are there people in your course for from Cadia opening a bunch of wholesale accounts? Yeah, I think there's three or four different people in our course from Canada. Um, one of them's brand new and she's just learning the rope. So she's just getting started, but there's two other ones I believe from Canada and they're definitely opening accounts. So I believe you're in Canada. I'm assuming you're in Canada. That's why you're asking, asking the casual flipper, but 
Um, we also have sellers in Italy, Colombia, United Kingdom, Australia. So there's, it's universal, the content we teach. Um, what's your opinion on Amazon USA versus Amazon UK? They're both great marketplaces. Obviously, Amazon USA is much larger, so that also means higher competition. Um, but you get the benefit when you sell in UK of the exchange rate, which is good. Uh, but they both have great opportunities. It really depends what you're capable of doing. I'm excited. Got buy box on a product that people have been lowering prices on. Nice. That's huge. Hey, Eric. I hope you are well. I got a question. I got a UK trademark. Is there anything wrong with me ordering from wholesaling and selling products that are of other brands but under my trademark? Yes. Yes, there are. Unless you add a value bundle item to it. So, let's say... Um, let's say you want to sell this tape right this tape is a brand name tape let's say it's scotch tape right this is a scotch tape tape gun that you want to sell right so to list this under your you you under your trademark you couldn't do that it would have to be listed under scotch tape but let's say you have this generic tape that you're going to bundle with this and list them both now you can list this under your trademark because you've added a value item so it will be under my trademark, even if there is an existing listing for the product. Is there anything wrong with that? Yes. So I just answered the question for that. You cannot do that. That would be like um, buying, let's say, uh, Old Spice and calling it whatever your trademark is. What's your name? Um, Hav Hamel. Hamel. So no, you cannot do that. You, you would possibly get an infringement um, complaint and suspend it. Possibly. I do 139 in, so what's that, like 175 US? So we'll add that to the total. So plus 175, what is that? Zero, seven plus four is 11, plus one is 12, carry four, five, six. So now we're at 13.62. That's huge. I didn't catch the B2B wholesale deals. Uh, what's that? Do you think the buy box is offer offer related to where the stock is in the US Amazon warehouse can the buy box be regional uh, yeah I 100% that's how, I 100% think that's how Amazon's buy box works it's part of their algorithm for determining who wins the buy box think about it let's say you live in northern california and Amazon's deciding who they're going to give the buy box to if you're shopping for this calculator, right? You're shopping for this calculator. I'm on the listing, but all my units are in, let's say, Illinois. There's another seller on the listing. All his units or a majority of his units are in Florida, and you're on the listing, and your units are in Oregon or Oregon, right? And the buyer's in Northern California, most likely, they're going to give the buy box for that person searching the Oregon seller because it's much closer. It's cheaper for them to ship. They've had this ship figured out and mapped out to a science. So I think a uh, region has something to do with the buy box, yes. Yeah, Bradley's gone. Cash flow is king. What's the website for Everest? I don't know. Everest.com. Just type in Everest Wholesaler. Eric, we have to talk about... What do we have to talk about? AZ Wise Guy said, Hey Eric, you're awesome. Do you use the statistic chart at the bottom of Keep a Chart? And if so, can you hook us up with your strategy of how you would analyze the statistic chart? I'd have to pull up a listing. Now you got me thinking and shit. Let me pull up a listing real quick. Slide on Amazon. Let me jump to the next question. A product. We got another 10K. So now we're at 13.630. Let me pull up a listing here on Amazon. I'm going to analyze this Nutella. Let me get back to your question about that scotch tape on Monday. Okay. Let's talk about it. 
God bless you, Eric. I appreciate you helping us all. No problem. When's the keep a course? We haven't dropped it yet. It'll be like a one day event, probably. The keep a the keep a uh no, I just wanna look at fucking Nutella. I wanna look at Welch's fruit snacks. I just wanna look at Nutella. Alright, I'm gonna do this real quick, answer this question, then I'm gonna break out of here. Jay Biz, what's up my friend? How many units per employee per day on average are prepped? So let's do some math. What do we have? Four, four, eight, twelve, sixteen. So that's 10,000 divided by 16, about 625. 600 to 700, depending on the day, are prepped daily per employee. I can fuck with those numbers. Now, if you include the entire warehouse staff, obviously that number gets less. If you include pickers and managers, that number gets less. But just production stations, it's about 600 to 700 units a day. Um, all right. So let me, I'm going to actually look at, let me look at this Nutella listing. It's only got one FBA seller. This one's sold by Amazon. We'll look at the big jar. Um, what is this? Questions. You're the fucking man. Be well. Hope you're getting everything you ever wanted. Absolutely. You're the best. Recommendations to deal with returns. Answer that. Um, all right. So the statistic chart. Let's see. Statistics. Uh, yeah. I. It's. It gives you average sales rank. You know, for the past 30 days and 90 days. Um, you know, an average price, but I don't really, I don't really ever look at it. It's not something I really use often, you know, and the only thing I might use it for is average listed price. Um, you know, and, and maybe average sales rank in the past 90 days, cause that's good to know, but you can really just look at the chart and get that. So before I answer these last two questions, the total of sales that everybody in this live done, I'm not sure, probably three, 400 people joined this live in and out, in and out, in and out. Right now we have about 45 people, but in and out throughout the collective time of this live, it was probably three to 400 people. And out of all of you who joined, three point, it's right here. It's a little, there's a lot of writing on here, but it's right here. 3.63 million dollars or 13, I apologize, $13,630,000 in sales from products that you sold. Not me, you. That is impressive. So for any of the naysayers who say Amazon's not an opportunity, I don't know what they're talking about. Warehouses are getting sold and leased so fast. There isn't enough of them. Um, no, you just gotta keep looking, my friend. Keep looking. Keep looking. There's, there's, you're going to find the right warehouse for you. We warehouse shopped. When we moved into this one, it probably took us six months to find this warehouse. So you've been looking for, I don't know, maybe a couple weeks, maybe a month. So keep looking. Do you have any 3PL recommendations on the East Coast? Um, no, but if you send me a DM after this, I could send you a... Uh, Prep Center that we recommend. Thanks for giving up your time, Eric. Appreciate you. No problem, FBA Phil. Hope everyone has a killer Q4. Us as well. Thanks. Enjoy your night. Appreciate you joining, everybody. Love to spend my Sunday evenings with you. I hope everybody crushes this fourth quarter. As always, if you need anything, let us know. In the coming weeks, we're going to be reopening East Sellers RI to a limited number of people. So if you have any interest in joining, we'd love to have you inside. The first release was a huge success. Over 100 people growing their Amazon business. I love spending my weekends or my weeks with every single one of them. And I love spending my weekends with you. So most importantly, stay grateful. Stay lit. Have a fantastic evening. See you on the flip side.